Hey everybody, welcome to next to the Hoppy Crafting Podcast. I am Chris. I'm Eddie. And uh, we are here at uh, my lovely studio today. Yes. No. Which, AKA is my dining room. So. Thanks for joining us. It's always something else. <laughs> They're multi-purpose rooms. So back to our uh, kind of, I guess our standard format. I don't know if this is standard or if this is... Uh, this is our most uh, consistent format. There you go. I like that. I'll take a consistent format. Yes. So uh, lots of things to talk about today. Yeah. You want to start off with the super bad news? Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of bittersweet news. I think we're talking about two different things. What? Okay. You go and then I'll okay. tell you if it's right or not. Super bad news is this is our last show. No, that's not what... That wasn't... That wasn't what? In this house. Oh, that's true. Ha <laughs> Right? Hopefully. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Chris is moving. Yeah. So anybody's stalking me right now, I won't be here anymore. You're going to have to find me again. Yeah. You're going to have to steal another Amazon box and then... <laughs> yeah, let's track me around. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, last one in this house. Uh, no, I was talking about the other, I'm really sad, and I think I predicted it. I think that I said, by the time uh, 12 West creates <laughs> a brewery downtown, I will be moved out of my house and it won't make a difference to me anymore. And it doesn't. It's, and it's pretty damn close. It's not going to make a difference. Chris's bittersweet Main Street dream is uh, taking another course. Listen, um, I'll probably still enjoy it, but I won't enjoy it as much now because I'm not as close. And for other reasons. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. That's the bittersweet part of this. Um, but super, I mean, cool with them. It's funny, like, there's been some stuff posted, and it was like, all of a sudden, all in boom the ninth, the ninth it was like things are built because i thought it was just like concept pictures and stuff and then looking at the uh, social media posts and some other like articles it was like nope everything's there ready to go i was like when the f- yeah when's the last one's in downtown mesa i missed this are you know well what? it's all it's also farther down than the like congested part of right <laughs> yeah air quote congested uh, part yeah. of downtown mesa yeah i usually don't go that far down so i think that's kind of what it is i just wasn't even Usually stop at Desert Eagle and yeah, that's, that's as far as you make it. Yeah, yeah. No, uh was that uh what's that bear place with the freaking ice cream? Slickables? Oh yeah. Yeah, slickables. That's when I stop there and that's about far I go. <laughs> you don't go to the margarita bar? No. Also there's like fifteen antique stores down that way either I don't go to. Yep. I'll go to those. But yeah, so they I mean it was it's crazy. I'm looking at a picture right now. It actually looks really nice. It actually has a really big, huge uh like upstairs patio, an outside patio that looks pretty open. Uh the uh, one of the guys was posting some on his, his Facebook page and it was a ton of stuff about the inside and, and things going on in there. So I don't know. It looks really nice. I, mean, I can't actually wait. They didn't really say what they're going to be producing there. Did you see anything about what I just saw? It's it, so it's two two levels. Okay. And for to clear it up, because uh, everybody knows your dr- hopes and dreams, but for Twelve West, yes, for everybody who doesn't know, we've been talking about this for what. At least a year and a half. Oh, at least. That 12 West, who is currently in Gilbert, is named 12 West because of the address 12 West Main Street. They're actually moving into that location. Finally. Finally. Which, again, they were were out of there. But it took a long time to go back in there. And it wasn't like, oh, we're building the place out. I mean, maybe it was. Maybe it just was all the inside. We just didn't see it or something. But Well, that whole area was under construction. They were doing like a facelift on all of like downtown Mesa. Like okay. Oro had like, they had that little patio put right. in. Yeah, but they got freaking bashed by a car too, right? No, that was Worth. Is that Worth? Worth had a car go through the window. Yeah. It's probably somebody at Oro. <laughs> probably. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, it's... What it says full kitchen, full uh, kitchen, bar, and here's the thing it's two levels, two bars, but only 12 taps. Yeah, it doesn't seem as much that doesn't seem right. It seems like a lot of uh square footage for 12. not a lot of beer. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, if it's 12 taps, is it 12 taps total? Yeah, if it's 12 taps for both of them, I mean, if it's just 12 total, that seems weird. That seems not enough at all for, I mean, the square, like the building's huge. From what the look of it, it looks really big. Yeah. So, I don't know. That seems weird. Full kitchen's cool, though. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they don't say anything about food and who they have yet, but uh, for a place to actually have some food, it's going to be kind of a, it's gonna be nice. They'll actually, they'll take the fam there and drink some beers and eat some food. Yeah, and then is this before or after you go to De- uh, Desert Eagle? Uh, way before. 
<laughs> Wait, is that all your health food? Uh, yes. No, oh. I think so. No, oh. don't know. Still haven't been in there. It's all good. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it's it, again. It just seems crazy. That's it's, that's. So they said basically, uh, what is so? Was a lot of information, but not a lot of details. Yeah. That's what it was like an info dump, but you didn't like. What's going to be on tap? Are they doing local spirits? Are they doing? Well, I mean, I, I would imagine maybe some Grand Canyon stuff in there. That'd I would be kind assume. of cool. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, just because, yeah, of how tight uh, Grand Canyon and 12 West are. So that'd be pretty pretty awesome. What are they? Well, we'll see. I mean, who knows? Uh, anybody else that doesn't? So northwest corner of Center and Main in downtown Mesa is kind of where it's going. So uh, interesting. We'll see. It opens. Was it uh, grand opening supposed to be? Odd choice. December 31st. Yeah, New Year's Eve. <laughs> Hope they have a soft open before that. Yeah, I would hope so. Because that seems <laughs> let's feet to the fire real quick. Yeah. Yeah, that seems really I don't know. We'll see. Uh so the, the bittersweet, bittersweet part of it? Yeah, the bittersweet is was it uh Noel, who we've talked to numerous times on the show. Friend of the show, had on the show. Yeah, friend got of the drunk show. with on the show. Yeah. Tell us uh, played yeah, drinking games, play drinking, that kind of stuff. Made the Senate, definite Senate. controversial PBR <laughs> hams. <laughs> and totally uh, sat on his couch multiple times. Oh, at beer festivals? It was all over that couch. Yeah, so this, this announcement came, what, as we recorded this two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Yeah, yeah, so I think uh, right around Thanksgiving it was. Uh, yeah, it might have been like a week before Thanksgiving. Yeah, so, so. it was. So yeah, uh, he he made a social media post uh, again. Mouth by Southwest actually you know, uh, basically just commented on it. He they really just basically, which is weird. They basically just copied his quote and said, "Big news out of twelve from Twelve West <laughs> Head Brewer." Yeah, so is uh, yeah co-founder and head brewer no- Noel Garcia. Uh, he basically yeah said on his social media that you know such is life that he's leaving Twelve West and. Uh, you know, it's, it's, he's happy and thankful for everybody that worked there and, and grateful for uh, everything he's learned and done. But he's moving on to uh, different things. Doesn't know what the future holds, but uh, he's going to start looking for a job, I guess. So I would hope so. That's, it's helpful. Yeah. Helpful. Um, but super cool. I mean, I, I, like I said, we, Noel's a good friend of ours. So I'm super excited to see what he does next. I can't imagine he's not going to be brewing, brewing something, somewhere. brewing somewhere, starting something new, um, you know, for, the short amount of time that they had at 12 West that he's, he's been there, that they've been open. They don't a ton of things, right? I mean, it's only been this last was their third anniversary. And so that's pretty crazy that they've done so much and they've done, I mean, lots of good can releases, lots of good can art. I, I just think, I think 12 West has a really good, they had a really good kind of feel to the brand. And I like that a lot. And I think their beers were good. Um, sometimes they kind of hit, like they were hit or miss. Um, but overall, they're really good. Yeah, so. I think when they first started canning some of their stuff, they were having some. Yeah, but I think that's anybody though. I think anybody can their stuff. Yeah, never. it's just they can't. It's just hard to dial that in. It's not as easy as people think. Just to be like, I'm just going to put beer in a can and can, <laughs> slap a lid on it. There you go. Like, yeah, it doesn't work that way, especially when they sit on shelves for a while. Um, but I think they dialed that in. They're a lot better at it. So, again, cool, and I'm glad that Twelve Us is doing stuff downtown and that they have, you know, their new facility. Well, I don't, actually, I'm not even going to brew there, but new, you know, place open down there. And uh, it's good for them, but I'm really excited to see what Noel's going to do because he's not going to stay. Yeah, stay and I, I know, like, looking at social media, a lot of people were, like, surprised. Well, we weren't surprised because I told you because somebody told me through, yeah. The, yeah. through the rumor mill. Right. But um, a lot of people on social media were like, wow, this came out of nowhere. And people were like, a lot of people thought it was, like, a spur of the moment kind of thing. Like, right. he just said, fuck it one day. He was just, I'm done. Which I don't, I don't think that's the case. Yeah. No. In fact, I know that's not the case yeah. um, from knowing several weeks in before he actually did it. And I talked to I talked to Jeff and he knew as well. Right. Um, well, I mean, you saw and then like, I think prior to Noel making this this announcement to uh, Jay Lynn actually left and she went to another restaurant, I think down towards uh, Surprise. Not Surprise. Uh, what's the other Queen Creek? Queen Creek. I never remember Queen Creek for some odd reason. Let's forget it. Yeah, forget forgettable. It. I, try to, I try to forget that place. But yeah, she went, I think she was a restaurant down that way. She's the general manager down there. So yeah. like you saw that kind of happen and then this happened right after it. So it wasn't like 
like you said, it wasn't like an overnight kind of quick decision. It was, hey, we're going to make this move. And so, you know, she didn't want to be there, I'm guessing, if he wasn't going to be there. So, so it kind of takes yeah. away the excitement of the location opening a little bit. It does. It really does. Because I was excited to go in there and see. That's the thing we <laughs> talked about. Like, who's the brewer there now? Don't know. Like, well, I know people have brewed there, but I don't know. Uh, it's probably Gully. Right, he's gonna be. Do you think he's the head brewer? I don't. I mean, has he learned enough between now and then? I mean, he's, I, he's, he's been, been in there for a while, right? I think he's. I think he's been their production brewer for a while. So I think he, at this point, has been doing it well enough, long enough that he probably has a dial it in and he can do it. As far as like expanding and making new beers and doing other things, maybe not. So maybe in the meantime, they need to find somebody else that's going to be the head brewer, uh, or maybe send him from school, get him more training or something. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. Um. But as far as like production beers that they're currently making, I don't think they're gonna, they're having a shortage of that. I don't think they're going to be. That's not going to be a problem, at least. But we hope for the best because Sarah's still there, right? Which is awesome. And congratulations to Sarah who got recently married. I do. I see that. <laughs> I do yeah. see, I'm always like, "Who's the Sarah?" Jo- oh, that's Sarah. That's. I love it. That's Formerly great. Sarah Ritchie. Yeah, Sarah Ritchie. And you're like, oh, and that's uh, Swenson. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I was like, like oh. who is this? Yeah, I always, that's what I said. I always get confused. I'm always like, hmm. Oh, no, that's that's who it is. So very cool. Congratulations to her. And I'm glad. I mean, like I said, I think with her there, too, that they're going to do great stuff. So Sarah's awesome. And she definitely knows her shit. So so let's put uh, Desert Eagle on Death Watch. <laughs> now that another actually good brewery is going to be down there. Yeah. Well, they did close. They did recently close a uh, their second location. So I, I, yeah. Do nobody surprise? Yeah, no, no, no surprise in this table. Nope. Oddly enough, so. and we are we are the voice of the people. <laughs> yeah, at <laughs> least in downtown Mesa, <laughs> these two people. Yeah. Uh, so Ed, we are drinking a beer, by the way. We probably should talk about that. Yes, yeah, so there's a story with this. this is, there's a specific story why I brought this beer. Okay, because this is uh, yeah, this is boozy, dude. <laughs> is that the name of the beer? Or is that? Yeah, no, I'm let you. It's your beer. You you tell it. I'm not, oh, so I'm not we are drinking. I was going to let you do it. I had yeah. no problem with that. Mm. We are drinking a uh, fundamental observation mm. 2019 version. It's an Imperial stout aged with Madagascar vanilla beans and a blend of bourbon barrels. Yeah, there's definitely bourbon there. Yeah, there's a lot of bourbon in there. Bourbon and bourbon. And the vanilla. Um, food pairings mm. uh, Maytag Blue, Steak A Pouvier, oh. Vanilla Gelato. Okay, I don't know about a that. A little pretentious. Yeah. Um, store below 40 degrees. Okay. Seller and save, which this came out. I don't remember when this came out. Um, I do like that, that bottle logic has their, their labels where it says has like a check mark and it says to, uh, drink fresh or seller and save. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Gives you a little idea. But I mean, I think, listen, uh, if you're new to drinking beer, if it's a stout, Feel free to sell or age it. It's totally okay. Yeah. And this is approximately 13%. Yeah, it is. It is 13%. It tastes like 13%. It is not hidden in there. Super smooth, though. Yeah, for, not, I mean, there's no burn to it. There's no, no... Usually this time, last year, we were drinking your Black Tuesday, which was... 21%. Liquid fire. Yeah, it's 21%. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's probably smoother this year. It's actually uh, even aged even more now. Yeah. It's aged two years. So the reason I brought that is, has Bottle Logic turned into shelf turds? Dude, it's funny. I think <laughs> it's it was super. Everybody was super. So here's the thing with Bottle Logic. I like Bottle Logic. And they have a they have, they, have, they do an amazing job with their brand too. Because like all the shit that they do is super cool and interesting. Um, but I'm not a big fan of their like the what's it the actuator and their recursion IPA is okay. It's definitely it's super West Coasty for sure. Um. And their stouts are amazing, though. They do such a great job with these. Um, I mean, even when we went to their their anniversary party, we were fortunate to stop by and, and hang out and have a few of the beers there. Didn't you go with Noel? Was yeah. It, was, man. <laughs> funny man, enough. It <laughs> made it so sad. Yes, yes. We were with Noel and then Alex from Grand Canyon as well. Um, and we just, they had some really good sours and other fruited beers, too. But we just don't ever see those in bottles or cans or anything that get out of there. But you see, at least here, I see... They're blonde all the time. I see they're an IPA, and then these could be coming through a lot. And 
Yeah, it's kind of funny. You see, like, on the tap list, you see bottle logic, and you kind of perk up, and like, you see IPA, and then you're like, oh. Yeah, it's just like, it's just not, like, it's weird. Like, they just aren't killing those juicy, hoppy, well, it's like, juicy IPAs I want. We, like, you, when you think bottle logic, you think stout. Like, here, when you yeah. think, uh, like, Tombstone or Pueblo Vita, you think IPAs. Right. And, like, when Tombstone, like, Tombstone does a big Russian Imperial stout, but you're like, oh, yeah, they do that, too. Right. Yeah, it's just weird. That and I would say the 16 ounce can from um, Tombstone isn't uh, $35 a bottle. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's, also, that being said, it probably wasn't 13% either. So Probably not. I don't know. That's I mean, that's the thing. Is like, I, like I see these and I, I've definitely wanted to try some forever now. And so thank you for bringing this over. Yeah. So the reason I brought this over is because this is, I think, within a week anniversary of your little tirade. <laughs> When you went in for a case of fundamental observation, <laughs> remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Um, they didn't have it. So it was like the very first time Bottle Logic dropped right. in Arizona. The Wandering Tortoise, a bottle shop in Phoenix, got a case. Yeah. And Chris went there as soon as it opened, and they were already out. Dude, they were out, and they had a case. They had a case, but they weren't open. They weren't open, and they already sold the case because people were waiting in line, and they sold them all everybody in line. And there was no limit, by the way. Yeah. On that one case. Which was, very yeah. That's why you were very. Uh, so yeah, super not happy. That being said, I plan on buying one or two bottles, and because I was also buying a bottle for somebody else too, it wasn't even gonna be just for me. So, uh, so yeah. Thank you. I guess it took a whole year for. But it to the happen. funny thing is, the last time I went to the Sleepy Whale, which is another under that. What did uh, John call it? The uh, Shell Corporation. Yeah, Shell. Um. I, the last time I went, which is probably within the last month, there was still fundamental observation in their cooler. Oh, yeah. So they got a shitload of it. Yeah, I think once Bottle Logic saw that uh, Arizona had a taste for it, that they ramped it up pretty pretty heavily. I don't know if maybe they saw that some of their ticket sales were dropping off or something. I, I mean, it, that was how you could it before. Like you had to buy a ticket online and then go wait in line and then pick it up with the bottle, which is cool. It's an event because you have to like kind of go when they're open and they have a whole thing going on. But... That gets old real fast. Like, I don't want to do that all the time. No. And I can't imagine that lasted very long in California. And then you get here and people, we, we literally said to show up to a store and buy it. That's literally what happened. And then people, I'm sure enough people came in and had the fucking sticker price shock. Even, and here's the thing is, is as craft beer drinkers, like, you know, if I'm buying a, a bomber of beer and it's like 12 bucks, like that's not, okay, cool. That's par for the course kind of thing. Um, other people will be like, oh, what the, oh no, there's no fucking way. I'll be $12 for a bomber. Um, not a big deal to me. It's 12 bucks, yeah, whatever. But $35 for not even a, I mean, that's not a bomber, right? 500 mils. Yeah, so, n- no. Yeah. <laughs> and and for 35 bucks, base, 30 to $35, just roughly priced. Is that, that's the price it's going for. And then more, which is crazy. So, to me, it's hard like to choke that down. Which was tough because there was other places here selling it for cost, which was 25 Which is totally cool and i'm sure they sold all of it because it was 25 yeah somebody was, somebody was willing to take that chance but to take yeah a 35 dollar chance on one bottle of beer is like but what are your thoughts uh, on the know. the fundamental observation now that it's i mean tons of places outside of california got you know what, it's funny um fundamental observation this this is the saddest thing ever in the world that reminds me of Bourbon, Bourbon County. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally what it tastes. It's the funniest thing. That's what it tastes like. It tastes like just an imperial. I mean, and we've been seeing this for a while. I think the more I've been doing this, the more this is definitely ringing true. Is just I've the the social media and the outreach and the things you see and the fucking just kind of Pokemon got to catch them all fucking mentality yeah. of ooh I want that just because you want it and you haven't tried it. I guarantee you, you've had had that beer. It just wasn't called that, and yeah. it wasn't in that bottle. <laughs> it's, well, it's, it's funny the when that's the same thing. We and we talked about that last year because people were trading Bourbon County oh, for yeah. fundamental observation. Remember, and now yeah. it's like oh, it's just sitting on the shelf. Yeah, it's sitting on the, well. So is Bourbon County too. That's oh, yeah. Just a, yeah, I sent you the my obligatory. Hey, do you want Bourbon County? And I could <laughs> feel your eyes roll <laughs> in your text message. Oh like, man, it was hard. I was just like, no. No, I'm good. Especially at that price still. It was an insane price. It was like, what, $22 a bottle or something yeah. like that? Yeah. And, then I, and they that's had a small that, bottle in this. They had that three-year vertical. Did you see that in the yeah. picture? Yeah. No. Which is, 
what I mean, it, it was what 17, 18, and 19. It's yeah. like that's not even a vertical anybody wants. Like, people, if you did like a 15, 16, 17, okay, that yeah, people maybe. would be a little more interested, but yeah, the newest, yeah, the newest last year, so which the people are still getting cases of. Like, there's like liquor stores that pop, it's like, oh, look, we got a bunch of uh 2018 Bourbon County, and it's like, yeah, I'm good. It, it's funny, like, I just again, it's I've had this beer. I've had it, and I've had it. I've had Bourbon County too, and other beers too, right? It's not that it's the the flavor profile in this beer is not unique to any other beers that I've had before, and probably cheaper. Yeah, it's just so. expensive because you put Madagascar in front of that vanilla. Yeah, yeah, it definitely didn't help for the it's price. It's well done. It's not. Oh, this isn't a bad beer at all. It's a great beer. It just again, I just I've had beers like this, and it's not like you said. It's not. It's not so mind blowing that I was angry that i didn't buy any of these so how many people do you think are like oh it doesn't taste the same anymore <laughs> it, now that I, it's probably a lie <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been shipped here it's not the same it's not the same you should have had it five years ago guys yeah it's uh, it been cooler <laughs> yeah you would have been cooler <laughs> yeah that's true but yeah, what are you gonna do uh so moving on we got to we actually have a ton to talk about let me, let me pull the outline here ed that was just the first two things and we got sidetracked with uh that's usually how it goes but, uh oh the other thing uh Simple Machine opened. Yes, you see the that? place we shit on when it was Borderlands. Well, so that's the thing is like it was it was Borderlands, which was a stupid idea. Yeah, but well, now that it's a new place. We're so, fine with it. So I wonder if people um that like because it was a whole Kickstarter thing, right? It was a GoFundMe or Kickstarter where they actually yes, had, they were doing one of those crowdfunding right. things. And, so I mean, I just wonder if it's and one people of those. are losing their shit because they're like, I was crowdfunded under Borderlands and we still get my Borderlands swag. It's like, right. no, fuck off. So I, I don't know if said, oh yeah, so Kickstarter, yeah. So Matt Wright and Marshall Norris held a Kickstarter fundraiser earlier this year to open Borderlands Brewing in Public House. <laughs> and that didn't, construction dragged over the summer. Uh, then they actually decide, even though they actually just, they fr- franchise agreement with Tucson Brewery would contain their future plans. They decided that they was off and they're gonna open their own brewery, which was a simple machine. So they only offer two collaboration beers right now. One with Borderlands. I think they have more. And one they with have one Glendale's Grand Canyon. Throne Brewing from Lee Dabina. Yeah. Uh, and then ten taps are dedicated to Arizona guest taps while Simple Machine can ramp up its own brewing. I mean and that and that's we've talked about that in the past about And how, they're basically soft open. They haven't really officially opened, but they've Yeah, this article was from November twenty sixth, so it was a little bit it was a little older. Yeah, and I so it could be like I I met Marshall when he was working at Helton Brewing. Okay. And uh like I talked to him when they were starting the Borderlands thing and following him on social media, I think they within the last week they've started brewing their beers there okay so well, I mean, and that's the thing we talked about and we talked to, to rob before from the Crippers guild about that about why I and mean, how is that why is that a thing and why is that okay and it's just because the licensing and how it works is that you can't technically start producing your beer until you have a license but nobody has the capital to not have their brewery open <laughs> to brew beers to have beer on the first day kind of thing so yeah, you can't brew your beer until you sell beer, but you can't sell your beer because right. you can't brew it. Well, so you, it's I think it's you can't you can't start brewing beer until you're officially open. Yeah, right. And so, well, you can't do that if and you don't have, have any beer to sell. The beer to sell. So, people that have capital to burn ahead of time can do it, but yeah, most small brewers can't do that. So yeah, everything's every all every dime you have is invested in those yeah in the doors. tanks. The door needs to open. Yeah, Cooperage. So, a lot of Cooperage. Yeah, they're working on brewing their beer now and i don't know when maybe they'll do a new year's eve yeah right there you <laughs> go. grand opening yeah it says uh so southwest corner of 7th ave and deer valley near the deer valley airport never been there so way far north phoenix i can't i can't think of you've been there you've been on i-17 just keep going north <laughs> yeah i'm going to flagstaff I'm... <laughs> you drove right by it and that's about um, yeah that's what makes it tough it's so far away like uh yeah i don't i mean Super excited to try their stuff when we summon a beer festival, but I probably will not ever make it up to Simple Machine. I mean, here's the deal. I think uh, I was Flying Bassett just did their one year anniversary. I think it was them. I still, still haven't been there. Still haven't been there. Still haven't been there. It's just, it's, and that's not, even, that's not even far north Phoenix. That's you haven't, com- you haven't <laughs> completed your 2018 most anticipated breweries list. Remember no, that? Nope. Haven't done it. <laughs> still, still haven't been to Hell of a, Still haven't been to Walter Station. Still haven't been to... Nope. 
Who else did we name on there? Yeah, I don't um, think I'm a very good craft beer person. Yeah, you anymore. suck. Yeah, this is weird. <laughs> Uh, I've been by Walter Station a few times, but I was working, so I couldn't stop in and have a beer. And I, I didn't really <laughs> sure want Sure, you couldn't have. Yeah, I didn't want to stop in and not drink. That seems seems awful. Yeah, we've had a couple of... Uh, so, like you said, Dabina is now... Um, what did you say the name of it? Uh, Thorn Brewing. Thorn Brewing. Right. The Phoenix Brewery t- changed the Phoenix Beer Co. Yep. Fate. Or McFate back to fate again. To fate. Maybe next year there'll be McFate again. Which, by the way, did you see that the New Times gave them an award for best name change? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, not not too many people changed their, uh, did a mock-up of uh, McFate any, again this time. <laughs> I would have been funny if somebody like had the Mc, like people who did like the McHuss and right <laughs> just put like that X through it. Yeah, no, we <laughs> got rid us for us again. <laughs> That's too funny. Uh, yeah, dude, I don't know. I mean, hopefully their stuff's great. And it sounds like awesome for that side of the valley because I definitely need some more up that way. But yeah, it'll be it'll be a little while before I get up that way. Yeah. So which kind of sucks because Marshall's no slouch. I mean, he brewed at Helton. He brewed at Borderlands. Right. Um, I think he started at Tabina or somewhere out there. Okay. Or not started, but he worked there too. Um, I think he was doing public house for a while. <clears throat> the last time I talked to him in person, he was basically doing like production brewing at the Phoenix Brewery. Oh, okay. See, I mean, and that was right before the transition to the Phoenix Beer Co. or whatever the hell it's called now. Yeah, definitely some. That be potential. So, like I said, I'm excited to see him at some beer festivals. Uh, speaking of which, I know Black Friday, the uh, Strong Beer Fest tickets went on sale for 2020. Did you buy them? Not yet. Not yet. Ed, <laughs> but we'll be there. Um, Don't you worry. Damn it. What was I going to say? Oh, I guess we'll have to keep waiting for Grabthar's Hammer then. Dude. Because that's what we're hoping for. That We'll never, we'll never get it. Because I think that was the plan. Like, they were going to do a lot of more of the one-off Borderlands stuff up there. Right. And, Tucson was going to handle like the production, no trail, dual say, and the tool Avenue and all the like What's flagship this? beers. Citrano. Uh, Citrano. That's Barrio, isn't it? No, that's Borderlands. That's Borderlands. It's good too. It's good idea. All right, man. Well, uh, let's see what else we got in this. Look at this giant outline of things to go over. Um, oh, this is something that you sent me. Uh, there are two books, Ed. Two books? Two books being released about Phoenix beer. What's a two book? Uh, it's it's basically instead of one, it's there's another one. Oh, is that like a row book? Two books. Oh, okay. Also, give me that other beer that I gave you in there. Which one? There's three. The purple one. Uh, I'm colorblind. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, uh, so the first book is Phoenix Beer, A History Rising to New Peaks, um, which... Is that a, supposed to be a play on Four Peaks? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> author is David Clark, or Dave Clark, I think he goes by. Dave, Dave Clark 5? Dave Clark 5. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so he's actually wrote a lot of things for, um, I said the New Times for Beer. He's done some, uh, he, he's a Cicerone, he's a certified uh, BJCP or whatever, judge. Is it BJCP? I don't know. Hmm. One of those. Uh, but yeah, he's, I mean, Certified and a lot of stuff. So he actually wrote a book, um, kind of going to the history of Phoenix beer. Um, I think almost start, yeah, starting like the mid 1800s and kind of going into 1930s. And I, I think up until pretty recently, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it, up into today. So very awesome. He's got this thing for sale all over the place. So, I mean, there's, it's on Amazon, it's on PayPal. You can just go to their website, which is, uh, Brusician.com. Check out. So he's also he's also a musician. Oh, clever. Hmm? Does both. Hmm. Uh, but you can buy this on his site through PayPal. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. Uh, Google Books has it too. Twenty any, bucks. Don't any reviews? Uh, let's, go, let's go look at some of the reviews. Maybe I, know you, I know you love a comment section. So the other one, uh, and I know you uh, is near to your heart. Ed. <laughs> yes, everything's near and dear to my heart. Heart. So I'm going to look for reviews. You talk about the other book that's coming out. What's the other book? The Arizona Beer Book. Oh, the Arizona Beer Book. Um, so there's a book. 
coming out. <laughs> Are you going to say it's the Arizona Beer Book? That's the, the Arizona book. Beer Book. Well, the Arizona Beer Book. That's all you guys need to know. No, it's a coffee table book, I would assume, right? And that's what picture books are designed for? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you're a kid, it's called a picture book. When you're an adult, it's called a coffee table book. Uh, on good, sorry, on Goodreads, there are no reviews. Those books are super new. It came out the 25th of November. And uh, so, again, that was two, three weeks ago at this point, right? Yes. So, not a lot. Let's look at Amazon. That's so if, the cesspool yeah. of reviews. So, if you've read it, let us know what your review is because we don't read. I can't read books. Unless it's a picture book, which I might get then. Oh, wait. Um, yep, no. A whole lot of no reviews on that still. So Interesting. Nothing on there. Doesn't seem like there's an interest of Phoenix beer. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, it's actually currently unavailable. Somebody's trying to sell a Kindle edition for $971. Wow. Somebody like scan the pictures or yeah. the pages. <laughs> yeah, they're just selling it. Oh, man. So another podcast... I guess would be part part time podcaster, full time beer guy. Yeah. That's um right. Eric from Tap That A Z worked with what do you I forget the other guy. Um I just know his Instagram handle and nope. I can't even think just, of that off his, the top of my head. Man. Um anyway, he worked in collaboration with a photographer to do a beer book that's basically like a photo journal of breweries in Arizona. But yeah. it's, I think it's like a volume one. Right. It's, it's 37 the breweries in, uh, across the state. And we're probably at 137 right now. Yeah. Which is kind of smart because it leaves you if, like Simple Machine, obviously, is probably not in there. Right. So brand um, new. Yeah. That's not going to happen. So that leaves room for that. But kind of makes you wonder, like, what if one of those breweries closes? Is that is it still cool? Do you still want it? Um, You know, I, it's kind of cool. I mean, the nostalgia factor. Right. There's actually a lot of... Uh, I mean, I think the the pictures are cool. Um, it's kind of cool to see what you know things happen behind the scenes. I mean, that's one thing I like about our podcast is we get to go do that kind of stuff and go see how things are done. And usually, every time we go we go uh, record somebody, they usually give us a tour, and we kind of get to see some of that behind the scenes, anyways. So I think that anything that will help people understand that process and and see what's happening behind the scenes and how their beard's made, it's pretty cool. He's a busy guy too because he's moving into food now. So is he going to do a food I, picture book? I, we'll see. That's a there's a lot going on there. Um, the only issue I have is the price. Luke, Luke Irvin. Yes, Luke Irvin. Um, I show I, so it's only available. So at this point on their website, which is the Arizona Beer Book dot com. Oh, um, not even on Amazon. Well, I saw Eric posted a picture, and they basically like dump the pallet of books in his front yard. So right, it's yeah. all, I would assume self distribution. Yeah. So it's, they, yeah, it's, it's basically through them on their website. And then it's also only through, uh, local, I think breweries as well. Some of them have, yeah. Cause copies. he posted while I was on my way here that he's going to take a break from podcasting mm. for the rest of the year, which is only a couple weeks to yeah. push the book and probably go because I, he has relationships like with Scottsdale, beer co so i'm sure they'll have it available in there going on going on book signing um, tour maybe oh yeah you can go hang out at where would he hang out at helton you helton. can go set up a table at helton and sign copies him and his partner 37 breweries i mean like i said so, some of the pictures they posted you just on the uh the website yeah they tease really nice. pictures on both and then if you look at eric's or tap that Social media. Most of the pictures are from him. Uh, the, Luke, Luke, Irving, Luke, by the way. Yeah, not Eric. Luke. Well, Eric does too. But yeah. and those, I, some of those pictures are probably in the book. But like I said, my issue is the price point. Yeah, a little pricey. Um, Forty dollars is a little steep. That's the other thing I was, I was wondering about. I want to see. I mean, it, here's the deal. I mean, if they're they gotta make money somehow, I think, right? And depending on what they bought this book for and how they had it made, it's it's probably and again, not knowing it, and haven't seen it. I would hope it's a hard cover for that price. It looked like it was a hard cover. And it better have a, a jacket cover on it, too. I don't know if it had that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. It better have a jacket cover and it's a hard cover <clears throat> book. Because for 40 bucks, if you're going to give me a soft cover photo book, that's not that's not worth it to me, at least. Even I mean, and I love beer, but... Yeah, the only way I can justify $40 is if it costs 39 to make it. Right. I also want to see something. Uh, is that with shipping? <laughs> Well, I'm sure you could. Yeah, I'm sure he would bring oh, it to you. Ship free shipping. So there yeah. you go. All right. So actually, He's not too bad. Drive around Arizona delivering the books. Amazon, Amazon delivered. 
to your doorstep by the authors and they can sign it for you. That'd yeah, be that'd nice. be awesome. You can sign you it on your doorstep. Signed copy of it. Well, I told you before, I was like, um, damn it, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, well, crap. Oh, man. I had something to do with it. Never does it. Um, Never does. I'm going to win this beer. Do it. Mm, beer sound. Not a lot of carbonation in that thing. Yeah, the can was a little squishy. <laughs> I was, I was a little, little worried about it. So, I, this is a can of the Neonic from the Shop Beer Company. This is a sour ale with uh, pomegranate and blackberries. And it says dreams, pomegranate and blackberry dreams. So I don't know if it actually. Do you has dream of po- Do you dream of electric pomegranates? Yes. Oh, I remember what I was going to say now. Um. I told you, <laughs> I texted you earlier today, and I was like, we should be dicks and ask him for a free copy so we can oh. review it on the show. <laughs> yeah. Pull the influencer move. Hey, if you send us your book, man, we'll review it, and you'll get <laughs> totally, like, at least two likes. Only two people listen to the show, so. Hi, Zach. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think Cena <laughs> listens to the show. Uh, oh, man. Lost the she second. Just pays for it. Hmm. Well, it's good. Jessica listens. So, hi, Jessica and Zach. There you go. There's uh, the maybe people. Paul. Paul for a Julie probably listens to. Yeah. Paul Felice Navidad. Oh, congratulations to Paul, too. This is like the anniversary of the first time we fucked up his name. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's weird how time flies, Ed. I know. I, can you tell I listened to last year's episode around this time? Yes, I second. To freshen up. You want some of this neonic? Sure. All right. Hold on. No, be a real man and pour it into <laughs> your stout. God. Oh, it's you, sour stout. You got your sour stout. I know. That's what I did. I'm cool like that. Um, Yeah, I was, dude, I saw I. They had, because uh, I haven't gotten on there. Really Tastes places. like vegetables. Uh, <laughs> is a vegetable taste to it? It has like a, yeah, it does have like a. Veg- vegetable? Vegetables? Maybe it's, maybe it's the pomegranate. There's a pomegranate and a vegetable? Yeah. I don't does know. It have seeds? <laughs> yes. So water, oh, 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 is, is, a, is a watermelon a fruit? Or, or a vegetable? A watermelon and vegetable? We, we talked about this before too. I'm not going to get into this. Uh, but yeah, you don't get down there for the releases of it. And they're usually pretty, pretty good. Yeah, because they usually do these on like a Friday at like yeah, three o'clock. Or no, the, the Neonics they've been doing Saturday mornings. Which which just haven't been bad. But some of the other releases have been some weird times, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm not gonna get down there. That's yeah. not gonna happen. Uh but plus for a hundred cans. Yeah, it's not a limited kind of hit or miss yeah. if you're gonna make it in time. So I think they did this one during uh around Thanksgiving, like two. So I think maybe this was Thanksgiving two electric boogaloo. It's a jam. It's an electric jam. So I think that's maybe why they had some still left in there. I'm not quite sure when this one was released, but uh, they definitely had uh, like 12 or so in the case when I was over there. I had to get one. Yeah. I mean. I had to try it. See how it is. I mean, they have a good, they have a good things. Yeah. Um, the Orange Julius one we've had. We had that at Real Wild and Oh, Louis. That's, yeah. That's right. That was good. Yeah. I like that one. Uh, but yeah, I, was, I grabbed this can and it's a little squishy. So, but fruited, heavily fruited beers can't really. Yeah, you probably not want to pump in a lot of uh, yeah. carbonation to those guys. You're just make it a bomb at that point. But yeah, not a lot of it. not a lot of carbonation. It's good, but there's like a it's almost like a tomato tomatoy taste. There's huh. a little bit of that like um some pectin savory kind of. Like a salty tomato, almost. It could be the pomegranate. A salty tomato. You never had salt on a tomato? I have. That's yeah, I eat all tomatoes. Delicious. <laughs> that's the only way I eat tomatoes. When you're retarded. Salt and pepper and some <laughs> olive oil. That's how it works. That's, that's called Italian. Oh wait, and that's and, called pizza. And I think uh, you're describing pizza. And balsamic vinaigrette. Yeah. On a crust with pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On some bruschetta <laughs> with some mozzarella. Wait a minute. And basil. Yes. Expedition. Mm. Yeah. It's good though. I like it. Um, yeah, not bad. I mean, I don't know if I would run down for a Saturday and, and punch people in the throat and get a case of this, but it's good. It's really good. If you had a chance to try it, definitely try it. I would say, as far as like a dark fruit beer, though, the um, I gave you some of the Go Go Sour Ranger, right? The black one. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that a little better good. than this one, I think. Yeah, like it's funny, like the heavily fruited sour beers versus the just like you know sour beers. Tower. I don't know if that one was a Goza because they've been switching off on those between like Berliners and Gozas. Yeah. But yeah, that one tasted good. like palm juice, like the actual like palm. Probably the same price too because palm's expensive. Palm's real expensive. <laughs> Holy smokes. Hey, 
You got to hmm. pay somebody to squeeze all those pomegranates. Yeah. They squeeze them by the seed. You just do it by hand. It's fine. You got to have tiny hands. There is probably uh, a device for that. No, you have to do it by hand. All right. Well, that's why it's called craft beer. Yeah. It's <laughs> by hand. Craft pomegranates. Oh, my God. All right, Ed. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We have uh, some national news we need to talk about, some opinion stuff, and then uh, our standout beers of the week. Yes, which I haven't had yet, but you're forcing me to. Yeah. It's your standout beer of the week, and you're going to make it mine. No, well, you need to try it, figure out your own. Oh. So think about it when we come back. Okay, I will. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Bye. Welcome back, everybody. We're sitting down with new beers. We are. And welcome to the standout beer of the week, Ed. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. Do we have, are you going to put some music in here? Uh, uh, no, that's dun, dun, just dun, 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 dun. people uh, uh, listening to this in your car or at work. Just imagine that there was music there. Yeah, just switch to the radio real quick, <laughs> play some music, and then come back to this. Yeah. And that, we, do, we need to use more of the Takasubu Men stuff. So. Uh, standout beer of the week. Uh, Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, no, I can't. Nothing. I'm gonna do a jingle, and I wouldn't, that's just way too much stuff. Um, they have a whole album we could use. Listen, that's true, but we have other plans for that, Ed, or you do at least. Yes, I do. From what I hear. Uh, <laughs> so, the, so the reason I was at the shop earlier, I put up that Neonic, uh, is because I needed to go back and get some more of this business ethics. I think I messaged you when I got this. This is, and by the way, this is probably a little. Doesn't no date on here. This is that's odd. Usually the shop puts dates on yeah. there. Yeah. So. I, Probably not the freshest can in the world because it was a little older release here, but it was good when I had it last and I saw it. Uh, I was like, let's go check it if I have it back. I messaged you. I was like, this is really good. And you're like, did you save me one? And I said, no. <laughs> yeah. They were so good. I drank all of them. So you're just gloating, dick. <laughs> right. So then I wouldn't, uh, I felt bad. So I wouldn't got more. So now you're not a dick. No, thanks. Uh, His heart grew two sizes <laughs> yeah. that day. Jesus. <laughs> uh, this is uh, a double dry hopped, double IPA. So is it quad hopped? So 7.5, <laughs> which, I mean, I, there's no real standard for what a double IPA is. Most of the time, double dry hopped is over hopped anyway. Well, double dry hopped, but this is also a double dry hopped double IPA. Double's usually ABV though, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, this is 7.5 and this is a double. So yeah, that makes it a double. Which is like a single to me. So I don't know. Seven seven percent seems like a normal beer. <laughs> yeah, at this, <laughs> is, at is this that, point. Is that a problem? Like the shop always does, they put uh, a nice little... Uh, little quote on here and this one's from michael scott it's business lecture from the office oh that's cool what does it say uh we can't overestimate the value of computers yes they are great for playing games and for forwarding emails but real business is done on paper okay write that down yeah that's yeah. uh and I, it's a good call i messaged i think somebody posted in like the beer enthusiasts they were actually having this and i was like that's good beer and like dylan Posted like you know something about it, and I would reply back to him. I was like, "That's a that's an amazing beer. I'm, I need more of that in my life." I'm like, though missed opportunity." And I meant to say it, uh, Billy Madison, but what I said it was Happy Gilmore. And then afterwards, he was like, "Oh, that's where we got the inspiration for the title from." I was like, it "Was from from Billy Madison." I was like, "Oh, damn it! I meant to say Billy Madison <laughs> because of the whole business ethics yep. conundrum." Hmm. So okay. he fucked it up. Walking to the tight rope here. That's, that's pretty cool. So yeah, the can. I mean, it's like a kind of weird neon. The the shapes, neon shape. Yeah. Patterns. What is that? Um, geometric. Yeah. There it's you like, go. Like what was that? What was that video game? Trapper uh, keeper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's that, and then it has a uh, a little guy in a business. Uh, Geo Wars was that the name of the that game? Yeah. We had to make sure. the little look like that. Yeah. White can. Pretty cool. But this is basically. I think the first beer that they made. Fierce? The fierce, it's a fierce beer. The first beer they made with uh, their new canning line. Yes. So I was actually there when the canning line got delivered. Mm. Hey, so lucky yeah. you. Um, and I was talking to uh, Jason, and he was just giving me a rundown. I'm like, yeah, it's cool because it's more compact and it's not like the third party canning line they've been using. And Which is like, long. It's yeah. pretty long. And he had a bunch of hardware that he was. Because. For those of you who don't know, the shop had to build their whole brew deck without instructions. So mm-hmm. the fact that they got instructions with their canning line, they're probably in heaven. <laughs> yeah, so right. you had a bunch of like fittings and stuff and it's still mobile. So they can like hook it up to their tanks, whatever tank is oh, okay. they're going to can and basically 
set and they didn't want to put in a hard line can and be like have to run like a hundred feet of hose or whatever right. to hook it up. So it's still mobile, but it's their canning line. And he was saying that they didn't want to put anything like church music or fight them through on the first run. So that this was sense. like a test beer. Really? So they could run it through the canning line. Well, they did an amazing uh, yeah. job. <laughs> so. it's, it's awesome. I think, even, I think they're, uh, they're on tap for business. I think it literally says, uh, this, uh, was it a, I'd be using the citrus hops, our first ever all citra beer. So, uh, yeah, so they wanted to do something simple. I, and this might not be that, but uh, when I talked to Jason, that's what he said. He's like, yeah, we're going to make something just so we can put it through the canning line. And I know that yeah. day they were just going to run like water through it. Like they were just going to, this is the hoppiest, beeriest <laughs> water I've ever tasted. It, no, it? before, like when they set it up, they're like, yeah, we're going to clean it out and we're just going to run water through it just to kind of get the feel of how it works and how it runs. And then we're just going to make a couple of beers, simple, simple beers that we can, that we don't care about if we have to trash it all. Cause we don't know how the canning right. line runs. So it's like, yeah, we're not going to invest like, yeah, a ton into that. Why would you do that? I, I mean, Looking at it, it is super pale. It is very, yeah, very it's light. It's dense. It's murky and it's juicy. Yeah, it's really juicy. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And so I, here's the thing: hops definitely had died, off, died off in this a little bit since it was released. They said November on the can, uh, on the side of the label. It said November 2019. Don't know when in November, but it's it's definitely died off a little bit since when I had it last. Uh, still not bad though. It's over actually. Really yeah, good. it's good. I could see so, why you're saying it's your standout beer of the week yeah. Yeah, yeah for two weeks in a row yeah well it came back with a fury it's really good I, I like this beer a lot so uh very it was kind of unexpected i was just literally i was like oh this seems pretty cool i'm just gonna get this it's good i beer. grabbed it i would say like, i will say this though it's not a tropic like it's hot <laughs> that is true uh but that wasn't an all citra beer no it wasn't that wasn't all everything else beer. <laughs> that was um i, I did like it that somebody decided to make a purse and napkins. Yeah, that was all of us. Yeah, I should send a C C C C and desist. C and D to them. Yeah, so, yeah, sure. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is uh, my state of the beer of the week. They still have some, so if you're hearing this, go pick some up. It's delicious. Chris approved. That's when we need that. Now we need the outro for that segment. Yep. Well, like work on big, that. Like, Let me know. All you, <laughs> you work on that. Let me know. Like a big guitar riff, just yep. like. A that sounds awful. Yeah. Well, just cold brew podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I like again. We talked about this before. I don't know how he has time to do all that. I don't either. It's insane editing. So, yeah. Good job. Greg. Editing is the bane of existence. Oh yeah, it's the worst. I don't even do it. Well, you will soon. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, so Ed, what is your standout beer of the weeks? The weeks. Yeah. When was the last? Time? Rally was the last time we recorded. Yeah, yeah, it's a little I while ago. Think it has to be shit. What surly beer was it? Oh damn! We, I went up to uh, Todd could, the Axe Man. Yeah, no, it wasn't that one. <laughs> um, Love me some Todd the Axe Man. Cena and I went to uh, Irene's because she had never been there. Oh really? So we took the drive one night and went up there, and they had the. Um, it was Black Friday actually. Right? Yeah, because I went to the uh, Goldwater release for the Flannel Buddies and the Black Go-Go Sour Rangers. Um, nice. And then we went to Irene's, and funny enough, they had that Oso Bananarchy. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they just had no advertisement. I was just like, holy shit, look, Bananarchy, that was like limited release. Yeah, and It's right. like it's all the way up here. So I was like, oh, I'll grab a can of that. Yeah, that was an interesting beer. Yeah, it was. To say the least. It smelled like Laffy Taffy. It tasted like hot cocoa with banana in it. It's weird. Good, but weird. I mean, I don't know. So yeah, you were up at Irene's and you got. This um, is the beer. You, this is the. This is your stand-up beer of the week. Would you have from there? Yeah, I went because I. I think I started out with the uh, Tombstone Oregon. Um, what was that beer called? Oregon Grinder. <laughs> organ grinder no the organ they did all those oh, beers oh. with the organ hops they did the single double and yeah, triple yeah, ipa yeah. Um, it's called the organ trail beer because all 8-bit and they got me with the logo and the label and stuff yeah it, it looks like the organ trail i think was, I, they had the double on still um yeah i was like 
something hops, something all the hops or something like that. It was good. It's like Oregon all the hops. Anyways, yeah, that was really good beer. Like I actually saw, I think in social media, I think Chris Dobson posted it, and it was like, "Hey man, that that was the beer." And I was really hoping he was going to say it was awful, and he was like, "No, it's really good." I was like, "Damn it!" Having with the graphics, and now now I have to get some. Yeah, now you're like, "Damn it!" Do you think it's followed off by now though? Uh, that beer, yeah, yeah, it's been around for a little, a little while. Let me actually go see if I can find what that's called. Tombstone Beer. Oregon oh. Lots. Oh, okay. Well, so there was an Oregon Lots double, single, and triple IPA. Oh, so that was that was your standout beer? No. What the hell, Ed? I said the Surly one, but I oh. said I also had the um, the 2018 Barrel Age Darkness from Surly Brewing Company. Oh, they had the darkness? Yeah. The darkness? Yeah. Uh, Bonnie gets some crazy stuff up there. It's a true story. That is 100% true. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I didn't have so I didn't buy the forty of wine though, like we did last time. <laughs> the rosé, you should buy yeah, the forty that. rosé, dude. So the the darkness, man. I was at when I was in Portland, not Portland, uh, Minnesota, Minnesota, totally different beer place, Minnesota. Yeah. yeah so I went, we were went to Surly, and uh, I was really on that some darkness, and I was just fooling myself because there was no way in hell <laughs> they were like, gonna oh, have any balls of that. Please, sir. Uh, yeah. So they didn't have any of that, but they had a pentagram, which was. I think a sour ale. Really good. It's really odd for Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, can I get a darkness? Dude, Don't you know? The the uh, the artwork on the darkness, and it changes all the time. So the darkness was like their you know, special bottle release. And uh, it was, it's always just fucking, just like super gnarly, fucking heavy metal kind of almost fucking pitcher. Like it's cool. <laughs> like it's, and it changes every year. Every time I see them, I'm always like, they got me. That's how they get me. I just went. So since we're nearing the end of the year, do you have a standout beer of the year? Head. Or you can't remember that far back? I can't. I can't remember <laughs> that far back. That's, that's, so you know what? I, I It's funny. This year, I think in my uh, untapped, I stopped rating beer. So I can't even go back and look at actually any beers I rated. What you liked? Yeah, because I thought it was a horrible idea. But I did put, let me see if I can find it. Um I did tell my friend that I was going to start rating beers differently on Untapped, oh, uh, using emojis. <laughs> 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 like for the description of the beer, just I was put a put, toilet bowl. I was going to put emoji. Yeah, I was just going to like make emojis, and then that way I knew what it was, and that it made sense to me. Um, well, you do send me a, the vomit one a lot. Yeah, well, it's because you say a lot of stupid shit. That's true. I send you a lot of stupid beers too. I'm like, oh, hams. What the fuck? Hams is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Also cheap. I'm good. Uh yeah, well, this is all the pictures. But yeah, I, I I literally took one and I I pretty much remember I put um just a eggplant, <laughs> put like three eggplants, put like three eggplants. Oh, <laughs> uh, because I was like, this is delicious. Three eggplants. I don't remember what what that one was. Uh, because <laughs> it was just like, yeah, this was good. Uh oh, the sun fade from Lucumbre was actually really good when it first came out. The first, yeah, I was you know, you, you text me like you initiate texts like twice, and I think yeah. it was the sun fade and this beer. Yeah, well, that's what I talk <laughs> about. Ed. These two beers are really good. And I send you all sorts of stupid shit. Uh, yeah, the sun fade was pretty phenomenal. Yeah, that was a good beer when it first came out. When they really, they've actually sent more of it to us later, which is yeah, because I think we drank it on the show, and you said that was the second <sighs> round, and you're like, yeah, this isn't mm-hmm. as good. Not even close. Uh, let's see if I put any more eggplants. Oh yeah, here you go. Uh, oh, that's what it was. That's yeah. See, I knew I should see my eggplant rating system works out great. Uh, I gave three eggplants to, I, I think we should go home from barrel beer company in Asheville, <laughs> <laughs> which was phenomenal. And I bought a freaking four pack to go with that. And it was so good. I wish I would have bought a case of it to go. I think I actually would have had room in my suitcase for it, but I wish I would have. Yeah, that was awesome. It was a cool app. Between Barrel and uh, other half, I want to say. It was Probably. Phenomenal. It was yeah. phenomenal. It was so good, Ed. I'll tell you right now. It was three eggplants good. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good it was. I th- If I had to pick a standout beer of the year, I might have to say it was that double dry hop top chowder. That was really good, too. So it's funny. like so. And it's coming out again, I think, in a couple so, weeks. So like all... like so. All those beers 
have a certain kind of like taste to them. That's just, it's just really good. And it's like that, like double dry hop chowder, this beer, the Lacumbre, that fucking burial beer, they all kind of had that same kind of like flavor profile. And I couldn't really put my finger on exactly what it is, but they all taste very similar. Yeah. It has like the the juiciness, like kind of like not mask the hops, but it balances that bitter hopness overall. Yeah. It just complements really well. Like, the juiciness is very distinct, but then you get that hoppy bite. And like, I th- think you're right. that All those beers have that like super juicy. And then you get this nice soft, bitter finish. And like, then it's just done. Oh, it's so good. So good. I, m- I probably know the answer to this, but do you have a standout worst beer of the year? Ugh. Man, I didn't really like that. Oh, so <laughs> you did like the banana key. Banana key. There was a beer worse than that. Yeah, the pickle beer. Dude, that beer was awful. Um, I'll say this though, I didn't, I didn't drain pour that. At least there's some other beers I drain poured this year. I can't remember offhand what they were. Oh, yeah, I remember the beer you drain poured. I almost brought it too. Oh, really? Uh huh. Oh no. Was it this? Yeah, it was this year, right? I don't. You tell me what beer it was, and I'll, maybe I'll tell you. you people would be surprised. It's from. Uh, What's that place called? Um, you know where there's two hippie bikers work. Dark Sky. Oh yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. What was that freaking? You didn't like that orange one. It was supposed orange. to be like that chocolate orange. Yeah, and I love chocolate oranges. Like my <laughs> wife, he's a freak because I like him so much. Yeah, that's weird. It was not good. <laughs> yeah, you didn't like that one. No. I still have a bottle, so maybe we'll open it for their next anniversary and see if it got better. <laughs> Let's just drink it with them. Yeah. And be like, you need to explain yourself. <laughs> Listen, we're going to take that beer and we'll take that freaking uh, the, the freaking smoky beer from Wilderness. Oh, fucking Battle Axe. Battle Axe. I would love if somebody had a bottle of that still. Some Battle Axe, some of that orange one from freaking. Listen, I, they all can't be gold. I understand that. That's just how this works, right? You, you can't make gold all the time. Just, you know. But <laughs> some, well, there are some bad ones, like to the point where we're like, I just can't drink this. And I don't like drain porn beer. I think that's just like a dick thing to do. But it would, I just don't want to, I mean, I'm not drinking it and I'm not going to put it in my trash can. So, sorry. I'm trying to think um, of what I drain poured the other this one was, year. The, I, it was, uh, the other one was, I don't, think, I don't think it was this year. I think it was last year. Was that no allocations? Which one's that? That was like the collab between like the three different liquor stores and, and 12 West. Oh. And that one was it tasted so yeah. bad. Like I actually had people try it. <laughs> like, I'm trying to pour like, it hey, like, am I crazy or is this terrible? Every time I opened one for people to try, I just had to throw the rest of it out. Like it was, I bought a four pack and was like not super pumped about it. But I think that was last year. I think it was this year. So this will surprise oh. you. And here's another segment we could do with another intro, another outro. <laughs> Ed Sports Corner. Oh no! So I went to the hockey game last night. Big surprise. And. <laughs> Going tomorrow too. Jesus, well, tomorrow's my birthday. Um, so I bought. You know, I'm a big fan of the Coyotes, right? Uh, People who listen might have. If Chris let it slip in, nope. I'm a fan. Um, huh. might have cut everything out of that, it. That also be cut. Don't worry, this will all be cut. Dad. Don't worry. But uh, except for and, the part where you say it's your birthday, like yeah. that part's gonna stay. And you're like, <laughs> my birthday just gonna sound super conceited. It's huh. my birthday. Hey, Moving guys, on. You might not know this, but <laughs> it's my birthday. I'm a big fan of my birthday. Like that's I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> um, like that Santan beer that they made for the Coyotes. Oh was yeah, not good. Yeah, right. Um, so Grand Canyon started making a beer, and I bought the can just to keep because I still have like the Coke bottles from the Coyotes, the stupid collector shit like that. Yeah. So I bought the Kachina Throwback Ale because Grand Canyon now has the. Uh, contract for the Coyotes. Yeah, I saw your can. So when the book. cans first came out, somebody messaged me and was like, "Hey, there's a recall on this beer." <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> contact uh, Grand Canyon, which I didn't because I didn't care because it was cheap and I just wanted the can anyway. So I was like, "I'm if it's bad, I'm not going to drink it. I drank a couple. It was bad." Um, went to the game last night, had it on tap. Not much better. Oh. So. <laughs> That's not good. I don't know if they were rushed or they just were like, hey, all right, this is a standard beer. We're just going to change it a little bit. But 
Fucking 0 for 2 Arizona Coyotes. That Santan beer wasn't good. I don't think this Grand Canyon beer is very good. Dude, so no. Uh, it was actually hashtag allocated, by the way. And that was this year. That was June of this year. Really? Yeah. That completely forgettable. Uh, untapped. A uh, couple, couple of reviews down. Uh, our good friend Jessica. Oh, she rated it? She, she rated it. What'd she um, say? Because well, she loves she, everything. She didn't rate it. She actually gave a rating. But she said, too sweet for my liking. But after you let it sit for a few days, it tastes delicious. <laughs> they let it sit out for a few days? or Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it makes me laugh, though. They're like, yeah. Uh, if I, yeah. Not good. It was super sweet. Didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. It's not good. Well, a lot of people didn't like that chocolate cake one either. Didn't they release that for their... Oh, yeah. We completely missed 12 West's anniversary. They had that crispy... Yeah, I didn't get any of their cans, which I... Well, uh, they didn't do... Some goop. Barrel-Age Midnight Run like they did last year. That beer was amazing. That was my favorite beer of 2018. Yeah, Barrel-Run. That was really good. That was awesome. So having it at Strong Beer Fest was delicious. Yeah. Or was it at Strong Beer Fest? No, it was at uh, Robot and Woody. They had it, which was awesome. Are you going to feel weird like if you go sit on the 12 West couch because Noel's not there? Not if Sarah's there. If Sarah's there, Sarah... We'll talk to Sarah. Yeah, we'll talk to Sarah. There's other people. Maybe Gully. We'll talk to Gully, too. He's cool. Maybe we'll contact her and get her on the show and get some dirt. She'll never. She'll never. I know. She's way too... She's too uh, business savvy to... For, uh, for our shenanigans. Yeah, for yeah. our lowbrow leisure activities. <laughs> She's not going to give into that, yeah. <laughs> our our hardcore grilling. Which is skills. funny, because that, that whole Noel thing, like, it's at least four times, and you've had it editing the podcast where like we've talked to guests and they're like yeah can you cut this because that's not supposed to be out or i misspoke or whatever there's been like a handful of times where i've had people tell me like off the record yeah or the most recent one was you're pretty much the media it's like so uh, i should should be telling you this this isn't fucking tmz we're not looking to burn (laughs) people down or expose people like we hear stupid shit all the time and it's never we're not the fucking we, Facebook groups. We're not we, going to relay that information. We don't deal in rumors. That's yeah. not what we do. So Plus, we're, we'll talk about shitty beer, yeah. but that doesn't reflect on a brewery or its people as a whole. Yeah. Like You could be the best guy in the world. You make shitty beer. It's, it's Or it's a shitty beer. Listen, it's just like everything else. If you're not failing, you're not learning. Yeah. Right? You, you can't. They can always be gold, like I said. And so if you're not making a horrible beer every once in a while, you're not going to learn anything. You're going to make better beer. So if you always just make really good beer... I would think that something's wrong. So, you know, it's like weird. I'm sure the people at Listen, Desert Eagle are perfectly nice. Their beer is fucking garbage. You try stuff. You try think make things work. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But you never know until you make it. So, um, we do have a, actually a few other things to get to. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna have time to get all of these. Rapid round. Let's do it. So, uh, one thing. Oh, by the way, I yeah. got a, one more thing to derail us. Oh yeah. If the fucking brewery sends me one more email about the goddamn. <laughs> Joining their reserve what, society, yeah, rever- reserve society, which by the way is not so reserved now. It's yeah. pretty much everybody. I've never, I've mm. never gone to the brewery's website. Mm. I've never had the brewery. I've never been to the brewery. I've never had it outside a bottle share. I don't think I've never. Right. And I get a fucking email every couple days, like, "Hey, there's still time to join the society or whatever." And it's like, "Fuck you!" Right? I think you signed me up for it. Yeah, I just did. You're welcome. No <laughs> here's problem. Your, here's your spam. They're like, uh, can you get this uh, festival? What's your what's your name and email address? <laughs> like Barley Legible at Gmail. I don't even think it goes to that email. Yeah. I think it goes to my regular email. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. Thanks, uh, so the few the few things here, uh, I will just read off the 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 title, and you just give me your gut thoughts. reaction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, New Belgium brewery acquired by Kieran's Lion Little World Beverages. Don't give a shit. I haven't drank New Belgium in I don't know how long. Yeah. So to me, at least, the only thing I like New Belgium. Um, so like the fifteen fifty four is really good, and their stout's actually pretty decent too. Fat Tires always been kind of hit or miss, um, but yeah, I definitely haven't bought their beer in a long time. But they were like one of the like, the biggest craft breweries. They're like still. number four, right? Yeah, three or four. Like the- so, besides like Dogfish and, and Boston beer kind of merging, like for them to kind of get merged with not a craft brewery in general at all, and this is a hundred percent stake in the company. Um, it's pretty crazy. So here's my thoughts on this. It it's all fun and games until the shit hits the fan. Right. Like everybody, the initial reaction is nothing's going to change. Everything's going to be the same. 
And lo and behold, a year later, everybody loses yeah. their fucking job. Weird. So um, it's fine, like, if everything does remain status quo, like yeah. they were employee-owned. Right, which, well... Well, here's the thing too: is they're gonna they're saying that you know all the senior management's gonna still be in charge, the CEO is gonna be there, and they're gonna let them pretty much just run their thing, and that's pretty much verbatim with all the other mergers we've ever seen. So, I guess we'll see. And those people got their money, like yeah, it's well, being it's, employee owned. That money went into their retirement, yep. and given that it's not gonna be employee owned anymore, that money it's that e- they their ownership either got rolled into a four hundred one k or it got rolled into an IRA. So that money is there. It's not like they, the board who speaks for that company or however their company is structured, maybe the employees had to vote on it too, to approve that sale. Right. That money has to get paid. They can't say, Oh no, this will be in payment. They might take a loan for it, but that money will get to the employees. So that's good. So, I mean, so Kieran also, uh, Purchased Brooklyn Brewing. I've had one. Yeah, we Brewing. don't get them out there, but they're definitely a big East Coast beer, right? So they got them a while ago, um, which has since also made a partnership with a uh, 21st Amendment Brewing and Fort Collins Brewing Funk Works, too. So Kieran's kind of snatching up these kind of craft beer type people and doing things with them. I, I mean, I don't, it's like. Is it as bad as Anheuser Busch doing it? Is it not? I mean, we don't really get into that, but it just it just seems it doesn't have as bad taste in my mouth as the, if, they, if it was them. Yeah, so it's still I mean, not great. I don't know. Who knows? Let's get uh, quick rapid round. <laughs> rapid round news stories. That's that's next time. But yeah, um, we'll see in a year when the fallout happens yeah. and they get sold for half of their value after they being bought out for a billion dollars, like somebody else. <laughs> uh, so. Good segue. Uh, Kings and Convicts Brewing Company uh, purchases Ballast Point Brewing from Constellation Brands. Speaking Un- of sports, undis- so the un- stadium beer of stadium beers. Yeah, undisclosed um, amount. By the way, there was no amount disclosed for the purchase of that beer. I don't that, have that anything brewery. to open this beer. Uh, you besides probably, my fingernails. You probably need a knife and a bottle opener. Yes. Um. So, who gives a shit? Because rumor has it, like, there's an investor that purchased that. It's not, like, that's that's the hot take. Like, purchased by an unknown brewery who is also, like, has a major investor. So, like, I don't know. Is it that whole weird definition of craft beer? You know, like, technically, we could own part of a brewery and they'd still be craft beer because we are not a alcohol selling company right right. so well here's the thing the thing i think with this for me at least this is highly dangerous by the way yeah it's fine use use that sharp knife to open that wax bottle stop waxing fucking stop waxing bottles jesus um talking to you drew (laughs) so kings and convicts brewing company right brewing bruco or whatever you mean whatever they are small Chicago brewery. Like this is the problem with this, right? This is the thing that seems just it's just, just got a stench around it for me that just doesn't seem quite right. And this is that there's some definitely some investors that uh, want to be un, unnamed and all this, and that sucks because at this point, who the fuck are those people and who are they? We, we'll never know. I think it's at the this mob point. could be Chicago it's mob. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's freaking what's uh what's the, what's the pizza places there? Raise pizza? <laughs> no. Oh, but I mean, it's what I'm saying. It could be the pizza. Spanatos? Mom. Spanatos. What? I don't know. Barrows? <laughs> Barrows is Chicago pizza, right? It could be, I guess. Uh, no, I mean, just, you know, the there's just something that doesn't seem quite right about this whole transaction. For a company to buy Ballast Point for a billion fucking dollars. And then offload them on. And then, like, not even like, it's, it's not even on like. On the DL? This is. 2015, they bought them, right? So, so at this point, four years ago, bought them for one billion dollars, and now it's, it's one billion dollars. Such a loss that they're like, nope, we're gonna sell them to them. There's no way this 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 small time brewing right in Chicago had even close to a billion to buy them. So the price had to be way lower than that for them to purchase them. Obviously, yeah. So you think, okay, so maybe 500 million. 
they don't have that. What brewery around here do you know has $500 million to buy? Valuable? Or there's debt involved, and they assumed some of the debt. Maybe. So that's where, that's where the investor plays that big. And well, that's what came up a while ago is that there's – this back and this was this this goes back to the whole um, modern times uh, oh, private investment right, right, thing right. where they sold shares to private that opened the door for private investments to basically act like individuals right so I wonder if this is a different way of that where they have this major investor that took it but yet they're somehow offhand related to that brewery so they're like yeah no the brewery bought it but it's like this hush money that's coming right. from like a what are, they, what are they called like angel investors angel investor where they're basically unnamed so but i mean without knowing who it is you just wildly speculate <clears throat> so i saw people uh were posting things like oh finally i can buy uh ballast point again and i don't like i don't know if that's true for me like i still don't i mean not that i was buying ballast point heavily anyways but i still was staying kind of away from them just because i was like mm, does my question to you is do you feel okay with the, the 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 whole deal that went down that you're okay to like to buy and invest back into ballast point there's so much investment that doesn't come out like we all want to have this romantic vision of breweries like yeah the th- Two guys who've been homebrewing in their garage for twenty years, no, I mean, like I, I totally buckle up their bootstraps and like put all their money in. And those stories do exist, yeah, but, but there is investment, right? But why wouldn't it be like, hey, Ted from fucking accounting that worked at Intel wanted to fucking give you know kings and convicts br- money to buy a brewery? Oh, do you think Drew? Yeah, I read Drew's <laughs> cost out. No, cock, but what I'm saying uh, is, is Intel like, money. Why isn't why why are they being unnamed? Why are they not just being like? Why oh, is yeah. it so shady? Yeah, it just like, seems like if it's if it's not a big deal, like if you're like just an investor or you're just freaking like angel fund money or just whatever, like you do a thousand types of investments. Why you want to stay anonymous? Like, what does it make any sense to me? It automatically just makes me think the worst thing possible. So. <laughs> To me, it's well, like, like, well, they're a fucking Anheuser Busch executive, and they just want to fucking do a side gig. Yeah, it's you know like, what I'm saying? like Pete it's, Coors started his own brewery, like that horse shit, and they're like, oh yeah, we're invested in this, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, it's some other fucking show company of a fucking big because you can't like you can't sell your house for a dollar, no, because there's market value and like different things that factor into it. Like you you can right, but you're going to be penalized for it. So I wonder if it's some, inve- like you're saying, some investor or some other big company using a shell company to avoid like penalty or taxes or, or licensing. Or, or just or- public outlash too, right? <clears throat> I mean, because you, you buy up a, it, it, it's so funny, like every craft brewery that Anheuser Bush has bought at this point. Sucks. I, I just feel like they haven't done as well as Anheuser Bush wanted them to do. Well, we, but isn't the thing is, is they do, do they really even want them to do that well? And I don't, I mean, again, this is all speculation because I don't know any numbers of those places. It's just, it's from a feeling of seeing things and what they're not doing, what they're not producing, what they're not making anymore. It's like, I don't see giant growth from them anymore. So, well, yeah, because it's all, know. it's backhanded investment from right. ABI. It's like, we're buying this craft brewery to stunt their growth, control the market, and push our beer. It would be different if, like, hey, we're creating this um, sub company that's going to imagine our manage our craft beer brand, and we're going to put money in the community, and we're going to put money in this brewery to make it a regional powerhouse and grow their footprint. No, they're using it to. It's like fucking risk. They're playing risk with breweries. They're they're just trying to buy things up so that again they they can't beat them. They're just going to buy them. It's all real estate. Right. That's, it's all real estate to them. Yeah. So and I wonder if it's something like that. Maybe there's some big investment firm that wants to get into brewing or the beer game, and they're you they bought or invested in that small brewery to get like licensing. Yeah. And now we have a beer license, so now we can buy breweries or we can that's possible acquire ballast point we can start distribution maybe it's a distribution company that's like hey we're gonna invest through this comp- this small brew who fucking knows, who knows? The, but the secrecy but, is the irritating part right, right, exactly that's the part that it doesn't sit well with me and it just still doesn't make me go you know i'm gonna buy ballast point again it sounds like a good plan it's like nah, i just i don't know if i'm gonna do it or not uh the last one i want to talk about 
is the December 5th day of action, which uh, just happened today is the 11th. So, uh, but they're trying to do the uh, Brewers Association is doing kind of kind of an action plan awareness for the Craft Beverage Modernization and Tax Reform Act. Um, so by the end of the year, they want to try to pass this act where, uh, like, it's pretty much it's not just breweries; it's breweries, wineries, cideries. Right now, they pay a tax of what is it, three point five? Three point five per barrel. Right, three dollars and fifty cents per barrel. Yes. So. And it's going to double to seven dollars. Seven dollars, that's fifty percent increase, which is crazy to me to think of. So some of the articles we're listing, that's like forty thousand dollars a year. A year that, that a, it's going to increase for breweries. Right. Well, breweries, distillers, winemakers, basically anybody makers. who barrels or deals in barrels of alcohol, right, of which any is kind, crazy. And so you know they they reduce the tax and give them tax savings for two years, and that helped a lot of breweries kind of get ahead and, and be able to work. This might cripple a lot of breweries that we currently have, and it might actually stop a lot of breweries from actually going into production because of it. Oh, yeah, it could halt. It could put a huge dent in it because, I mean, like people said, that's a fermenter. That's a bright. That's two bright tanks. That's It's insane. $40,000 a year is a huge – that's a salary for somebody. That's another employee that they could be employing to do things, right? Or if you're planning on growing, you're like, oh, we're going to grow our distribution. That's – $300,000 $300,000 now that yep. in barrels that we can't afford now. Is, so now we're not expanding. Right. We don't want to. Why would. Why, there's no incentive to grow because if you grow, you're going to pay more taxes, right? So there's not incentive to grow as fast and do anything. So, which. And from what I've read, it was a stopgap kind of resolution. Like they did this to in the interim to create this other legislation that never happened. Yeah. And now they're pushing it to get. Make it permanent, basically. So th- this is, I mean, like I said, it's there. It's basically end of the year kind of thing. So I know we're kind of in the middle-ish of December. So the Brewers Association dot uh, org has links to kind of go. There's a link on there to basically go talk to your your uh, representatives and kind of let them re- reach out and let them know that this needs to be pa- like passed and this needs to actually be done as soon as possible because this will definitely hurt people in the coming years. And people on uh, social so. media have been posting the link. The Arizona yeah. craft brewers guild has the link posted in there. Uh, you can go social, social media. It's a hashtag stop craft tax increases is the hashtag they've been using. So you have to search that and I'm sure you'll find any Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. will have a lot. And of if you don't know alcohol is taxed up the ass already, it's insane. So for them to actually increase it for the brewery itself is just not, I mean, like I said, it just seems counterproductive, right? Because you're going to basically stop brews from growing, which means that you're going to stop them from creating jobs, which stop people <laughs> making taxes and other things into the you know the economy. It's just crazy. So uh, definitely check out that. There's, like I said, brewersassociation.org has an article about it. Search social media for stop craft tax increases, uh, the hashtag for that, and uh, get some more information. Reach out. I mean, click the link. It's literally just going and enter your... You enter your information. It already knows who your representatives are. You basically just enter your information and it hits send, and it automatically sends them a can letter. So, do it. it doesn't take very long to uh, to do that real quick. Yeah, especially you, you don't have to write a letter or you need a stamp or anything like that. You get that old school stuff. You don't do that these days. I'm sure there's a crazy sect of people that still mail letters to government entities and <laughs> yeah, probably local newspapers. Um, and those people. Uh, or old people that don't have all the time. Those are the people that get shit changed, though. That's true. The fucking vocal minority mm-hmm. is the biggest pain in the ass. And uh, we're getting too political. S- squeaky wheel gets the grease, man. That's yep. how it works. I did pour a beer while we were talking about that. You did. Uh, so those are the three the three articles I want to talk about at the end of the show here. Uh, so let's let's drink this beer and then kind of wrap the show up as we do Got that. It. So this is uh, and that's this is why I mentioned Drew from uh, Ren House. This is double vanilla king snake. Barrel aged imperial vanilla stout. How do you how do you think it compares to the uh, fundamental observation? Four pounds per barrel of the finest Tahitian and Madagascar, Madagascar vanilla beans aged in George Dickel bourbon barrels. It's funny the bourbon's different. Yeah, it's like less it's really, woody. Yeah, it's really weird. Like, like the bourbon makes a big difference. The vanilla is still there, and I don't know if it's because of the Tahitian vanilla um, compared to just a straight Madagascar, but. It's a really different vanilla too. Like the vanilla is not. Yeah, the vanilla is a little more. I would say it's a little more like what you would smell like if you're making cookies. Yeah, yeah, I could say. I mean, that sounds. It's a little more like. The the smell on it's really interesting because it's not. 
a big stout. It almost feels like just like alcohol and the, the smell to it. I don't get a whole lot of thing else in there, but there's a lot of taste to it, which is awesome. Um, that is a 12 ounce bottle. Yes. Cost. I know Ren House tried to keep it around a dollar an ounce. Okay. I think this was either 14 or 15. So it might have been even 12. I'm not sure. I could look, but price wise, you could have got two of those bottles for one of that one, maybe. Yes. So I think I got three of these bottles for that price. No, uh, that was the allotment for the Sawara Society. Yes. You jerk. <laughs> No oh, way. I asked you if you wanted one of these. This, you this didn't jerk. want one. No. I figured you'd share it with me. And you did. <laughs> Works out every time, man. This is great. <laughs> uh, the last thing I want to talk about was I want to get your opinion on something. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this whole show is about opinions. We got a lot of them. If you come here for the news, really for the news, you probably. If you do. want old news. <laughs> This is the place to come. Listen, this is our opinion about the news. Kind oh, of by the way, I was right. Eric just posted that the Arizona Beer Book's available at Scottsdale Beer Co. So I called yeah. that one. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, so this time of year, there is a giant push for winter slash Christmas beers, like all over the place. You for them, you against them is one of the things you like. You're like, ah, winter beers are back in stock, and you're like, go grab your favorite winter beer, or is it like, man, I don't really care, or this shit needs to stop. It's ridiculous. Like, the, is, it the, is it like the pumpkin beer fad? You know what I'm saying? I think the novelty needs to stop. Like, I fucking hate like spruce tips or. Like, <laughs> I was say, what what is uh, what do you what, what would you consider a winner slash like some with spruce tips or like punk like you know the holiday seasoning kind of spices kind of thing? Yeah, it's just spicy. Like yeah. it's I think it's the. The winter warmer of St. Yeah. Dan's. Or like what's the uh, Sierra Nevada one? The, um, the Celebration. Yeah, Celebration. Like yeah. that's a good beer, but yeah, it's not, I wouldn't really say it's like. Well, Great Divide has like Jubilation or whatever. Yeah. And there's like the Snow Drift. And there's all these different very Christmassy, wintry themed beers. But is it the name or the actual beer? That's the thing. Like, And most of the time it's just the name. Like they're just making. It's true. They might put like a spice in it or of well, some sort. Anchor Steam does their Christmas beer. Yeah, there's a Christmas tree on it, and like Fates releasing their Holly Haze, which I think that's like a fucking spruce tip beer, and that can fuck off because that minty taste doesn't belong <laughs> in beer. It's, I mean, yeah, it's one of those things where I definitely don't seek them out, and I, <clears throat> I'm kind of a little over that too. I think it's getting kind of in the well. You go to like Total Wine, and you see like the Bad oh. Elf and like the Cold. So like beers, those ones are just like they're just fucking terrible beers. Yeah, those like, are just ridiculous. Oh, here's a like smoked porter that's just fucking terrible but is but is like the bad elf in the same realm as like the anchor for christmas beer no it's, those are just shit beers that uh, like, so those are like like you know novelty those items. are novelty like those stocking are, stuff or like white white elephant gifts like those hey, the, here's a terrible beer that you're gonna drink because you're you've been naughty here, here's a pickle soda hilarious <laughs> oh, i'm so funny like, oh yeah like the jones uh thanksgiving dinner and all that shit yeah it's like that kind of beer right like that's that's what that bad elf reminds me of shit like that but the problem is that people see those beers and automatically equate those as a craft beer. Yeah. And so it's like, I wish they would stop with that shit. But at the same time, like, I, I do like the Jubilation. I think that's actually a pretty decent beer. And some other beers. Like the Winter Warmer was okay for a bit. Now I'm just kind of over it. I just, I don't know. No, it's just one of those, like, I don't really, I don't, I don't know if I really need a holiday wintery beer. I just drink a stout. Like, I yeah, just drink these I'd stouts. Just, I'd rather have a coffee stout or some sort of, like, I don't want spice in my beer, like, Cardamom? You want cardamom? No, I don't want fucking cinnamon. Yellow, I don't want yellow curry. No, <laughs> yeah, curry beers. Mm. Yeah, I mean jalapeno beers are bad enough, or chili beers. Dude, are... I got a bottle of 2015 Punishment from Stone that has some freaking hot scorpion peppers in it. That still hasn't been opened. That hasn't been opened yet. So uh, at some point, we're talking about doing a bottle share, and that will <laughs> that one's definitely coming out. It's coming out. It's getting <laughs> open during a bottle share. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Listeners. I think I think it's just shelf fodder. Like when you're running at the last minute, you're like, "What do I get people, or what should I bring to this party?" Oh, look, it's a, it's winter themed. It has um, like Rogue did one, and all it looked like a Christmas sweater, dude. And uncle, it's like, uncle, Uncle Walter really likes yeah. beer. I would think he'll, he'll love this. And it's like, freaking just, yeah. Or it's like, oh, uh, yeah, Cousin Bobby only drinks Bud Light. I'm going to bring him this fucking stout that he's going to fucking hate. Right. But, I, he, yeah. I, 
imagine like, well, okay, let's do Cinco de Mayo and we'll do all chili beers. Like that would be kind of more appropriate because it's at least kind of the theme. Yes. It fits, I mean, but, but that's what I'm saying. Like if, if, if that, if that holiday became like, if you started seeing all these different breweries create all these different Mexican style lagers for Cinco de Mayo and they all had chilies in them or something like after a while we'd be like, okay, we get it. Stop. Yeah. Like is that, is it's just, Themed beers in general just kind of get overwhelming, I think, a little bit. Like, the only thing I think people seek out is celebration. Well, that and the, um, I see a lot of the St. Bernardus, which is a Yeah, Belgian. that's true. That's also another one big people I see for Christmas, too. But, again, that's a Belgian beer. That's actually has, it's it's been around a few years uh, for them to make, so I don't know. It's just like, um, what's that, uh, Glühwein. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, let's take a bottle of syrup. Put it in a crock pot, throw a bunch of fucking spice in it, and everybody pretends to like it on the... Nobody likes that shit. It's like, oh, it makes the house smell nice, and people like will drink it to feel warm and cozy. Like Same it. thing with eggnog. Nobody likes eggnog. I like... Oh, I love eggnog. Oh, you're fucking weird. But I hate eggnog with booze in it. Like, that's the that's the difference. You just chug a carton at the grocery just store. Just regular eggnog, <laughs> delicious. Boozy eggnog, not that great. Um... Probably something with brandy. I don't like brandy either. Maybe that's what it is. It's like you're around people you don't really like 364 days of the year. So you're all just going to be miserable drinking fucking weird. Listen, uh, I love some mold wine. I love uh, Glog, which is a variation, Scandinavian variation of mold wine. So some, some, some good, there's some good holiday drinks. Some uh, milk punches, as they're called. <laughs> which is awful. Terrible. That's awful. That's why it's called eggnog now. It's not a milk punch. Makes sense. So yeah, stop it. Well, that being said, uh, uh, great way to wrap up the show. Oh, I do have one thing. Oh, no. We usually do like a Christmas list. Oh, yeah. But that's they're all the same now. Yes. It's fucking bottle caps and fucking now the big trend is... Uh, bottle cap shooters? No, I wish. A thousand of those. Those don't work. Yeah. Um, fucking beer subscriptions. The advent calendar. But the weird one I saw, and we'll keep it simple. This year's beer list, go to our website, go to our store link, and buy a Hoppy Craftsman t-shirt. Or there sweatshirt. You there you go. And I'll make a prediction now. Next year, we should have glassware. Okay. Possibly. We're not doing fucking koozies. No. Nope. We're not doing coasters. Listen, I found the perfect use for a koozie. It's when you're camping and it's 42 degrees outside and you're trying to drink a beer in a can. <laughs> That's a great time <laughs> for a koozie. You didn't have mittens? <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't. I just was like, I really need a koozie right now. Other than that, there's no reason to have a koozie. Exactly. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, so just that's your Christmas list. Just go to our website. But I did see something that was really weird. A lot, there was a lot of like state specific beer lists. Like I saw a beer list and it's like, here, it's a neon hams clock. And it's like, it's at the Portland Brewery Museum. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> God damn it. But um, I saw a beer caramelizer. I'm, I'm sorry, what is it? Beer caramelizer. It's basically a hot rod, not yours, that you stick in a beer and it, yeah, you stick like a fucking, oh. yeah, and it wait. like caramelizes the head wait. on the beer. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I thought you were going to say like you pour in a can of condensed milk and you actually <laughs> <laughs> no. caramelizes the. You take like a fucking fire poker, mm. heat it up, Stick it in the beer, it causes it to react and foam up, and then the heat kind of like caramelizes the head of the beer. Apparently, it's a German thing, but they sell like a device that you can like stick on your stovetop to do that. Um, we all know the German makes good products, so. <laughs> so yeah, that was the weirdest thing I saw wow. for Christmas don't. presents. Don't buy that, no, don't do it's it. It's like uh, Greg from BRI said, don't put your uh, tap handle or tap spout in my beer yeah i don't want foreign i like those fucking cool sickles yeah, what, like what? the little bottle cap that has like the big long icicle that's supposed to cool your beer like where the fuck has that thing been and why are you putting it in my beer and how well is it cleaned don't want any of that don't want any of it but yeah i agree i agree Ed. good don't <laughs> stick shit in beer that's not supposed to be there as jeff would say don't put your balls in my beer don't put random foreign object, objects in your beer to heat it up or burn it or cool it down. Cool it down. Yeah. So we will not have insulated. Uh, no, we won't. We won't. Well, sweet glassware. We should make a glassware that says do not freeze on it. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Not freezer safe or something. Yeah. Well, but it only comes out when actually it's, the glass gets cold. Yeah. 
when it gets cold, it's like it turns blue when it's not cold. When, it's, when, yeah, when it gets cold, it fucking goes, it disappears. Yeah, that'll that'll we'll do it. All right, man. Well, everybody, thanks for uh, thanks for listening. Ed, where can people find us? On uh, you said you said our website, right? Hobbycraftsman.beer. And then our uh, there's actually a link to our shop page there. Yeah, which goes to, go to our, find our some Redless store, which is awesome. T-shirts, and uh, other swag. Yeah. Uh, Hoppy Craftsman on Instagram, which is probably where we're most most active. Active. Um, I'm on the Twitters occasionally. Yeah, so. Chris does the Twitter. I do most of the Instagram. Uh, yeah. We other don't do stuff. We're on Untapped as well. You guys want to find us on there? We are. Well, personally. Oh, I personally. Yeah, I don't know about the show. I don't think we are. Yeah. No. Uh, Ed, who are the rightest fucking people in the world? Uh, the rightest fucking people in the world are Patreon supporters who have been extremely awesome this year. Yeah, man. I, so, shout out to all those guys. I mean, definitely, uh, we're still we're actually recording this show on one of the pieces of gear that they actually bought us uh, after all this time. So, it was super awesome. And we finally figured some stuff out on There's, it. Yeah. So, a lot of tinkering, a lot of, a lot of cool stuff to it. So, thank you. Thank you to them. Uh, big shout out to those guys. So, and those people would be Zach Dominguez, Jessica Langley, Paul, as I said before, this is around the one year anniversary of the first time we fucked up his name. Well, we'll keep so, doing it. Yep. Because he keeps paying us, so we must be doing something right. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks, Paul. Paul, fa la 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 la. I'm going to start writing these down so I don't repeat them mm. next year. Uh, the Indie Beer Show, Cena Gomez. Rob Fulmer of the aforementioned Arizona Craft Brewers Guild, who handles a lot of the legislation. Yes. They're not a sponsor. Rob is. Rob to is be clear, Rob sponsors or the Patreon, not the Craft Brewers Guild. So he personally believes in our, our mission. Yes. He, <laughs> he personally believes in our nonsense. Yeah. But I just don't want to think like the, the Brewers Guild supporting the, the ship. Guild. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, we have uh, opinions and I don't. That's one like people ask me uh, that I talk to why we don't do uh, sponsorships or ads or other things, and it really comes down to we we want to be really picky about who we want to sponsor the show and who they are, and that we also believe in what they're doing, and that their ideas kind of match ours. And when I also don't want their opinions to affect what we say, so. I want this to be as kind of, you know, organic and real as possible. So when you have somebody else fucking paying you to say shit, I don't want that to happen. So that's why we don't have them. Exactly. And the, the only reason we mentioned that he's with the Brewers Guild is because they do support us. They give us tickets to events and they, yeah. obviously we sit down with Rob and um, we support what the, the guild does. what the guild does for the breweries. So it's just worth mentioning, right. but it is Rob that is a Patreon. Um, other than that, it's Mark Bellisteros and Anthony Bracamonte. And if people want to give us an early Christmas present or a late New Year's present. Yeah, that's fine. Go to New Year's Eve at... Uh, 11, <laughs> New Year's Eve at Christmas.com. 11, 11, 11, 58 p.m. Your time, not ours. Local Yours. time. Local time. Local time. UTC, as they say. No, that's not right. No. Client time. Yeah. Yeah, go there. Uh, go to was it patreon.com slash hoppy craftsman. There's a bunch of different tiers we have. Uh, we have all different kinds of levels, even a dollar. I mean, a dollar works out. Uh, it's super helpful. I always say that the five dollar tier is like buying one of us a beer. Like you bless all us at a bar, you bought us a beer. You just do it once a month. It's not a big deal. So um, we would love for you guys to basically help us out any way you can. And uh, let's, you know, we said in the past, we'll keep saying it podcasting is expensive. So pay for these things and actually keep bringing you guys content we need to be paid for it somehow so and we like doing it we love doing it and I'll, even if we don't get um people to support us we're gonna still support us so. yeah we'll you, talk to each other your your wife will support us that's how it works yeah <laughs> it'll so. be a one-man show um yeah so also rate and review yeah. on uh who knows what the future of podcast hosting is there's a lot of rumors that Apple Podcasts is going to shit the bed soon. We'll a lot see. of people are jumping ship and going to like Stitcher and well, uh, luckily, Spotify. Luckily, we were on all those things. Yeah, we're so, on Spotify. We're on iTunes. Um, we're you know we're all over the place. We so. don't care how you listen to us, but if you do, we're just, glad you do. Yeah, just drop us a leave us a, a rate and a review. I like to say on this episode we'll give uh, Chris two stars. 
I'll take one star and give the baby Jesus three stars. That'll wow. give us five stars. No, that's six stars. Give the baby Jesus two stars. Two stars for baby Jesus. Yeah. Two stars for baby Jesus, two stars for Chris, one star for me. That's five stars. There's your rating. There, I'm in. All right, guys. Uh, well, thanks for listening. As always, I'm Chris. I'm Eddie. See you next year. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs>